Put your own news. I know. I know. <laughs> Sorry, that's the tired wife. I'm Melissa. I was the editor on this story. Okay, and I'm Karina, and I'm the writer of the story, An Unexpected Adventure, a wordless book, which I think the writer and wordless book in the same sentence is very perplexing to many people outside of this group, but it was such a fun adventure. So let's dive in. Cool, so we have a little boy and we'll call him Sia. And he's walking with his mother towards the library, but he is not happy. Look at his frowny face. He does not want to spend the entire afternoon in a boring library filled with books. You can turn. But once inside, Sia picks a book from a shelf and he opens it. And what does he see? Green foliage and leaves starting to grow off the pages. Sia is in awe. You can turn. <gasps> and he is being transported into a prehistoric world. What? He sees a giant dinosaur. Sia is so scared. You can turn. And he just runs off the page as a dinosaur chases him. And he jumps into the ocean to get away. <gasps> Under the water, he discovers all types of new things and is greeted by a friendly family of fish. He also sees a shark, but he starts to swim. Yeah, you can turn. Oh, sorry. Oh, there we go. Next up. And as they go deeper and deeper, it gets darker and he sees all this beautiful shivering starfish. He goes deeper to explore. You can turn. And would you know it? The starfish turned into twinkling stars. Sia is in space. He cannot believe his eyes. How did this happen? You can turn. We know I think it. <laughs> but there's so much to see. So Sia falls from the sky. And you can turn lands on a ginormous African fish eagle. He soars through the sky, but little Sia is starting to get a bit tired and he rubs his eyes. You can turn, snuggles up and falls asleep on the back of the giant eagle. But suddenly, Sia feels somebody shaking his shoulder. He looks up, and he sees the person he loves the most in the entire world, his mom. You can turn. And as they walk back home, Sia tells mom everything about his exciting adventure in the library. The end. Hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Well done, team one. Really, really amazing. Fantastic work. Incredible to think that 12 hours ago, this book didn't exist. It's just uh, mind blowing. Great stuff. On to team two. Over to you. Is it me? Yeah. You need to introduce yourself for just long enough for uh, teams to pick up your camera so we can see you. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Did it work or no? <laughs> cool. Uh, go for it, Ashlyn. Okay, I'm Ashlyn and I'm the designer of Team 2 and our story is called The Best Nest. Hello, my name is Megan and I was the illustrator for Team 2. Hi, I'm David and I was the editor for the story. Hi, I'm Crystal and I wrote the story and now I'm going to read it to you. So it's the best nest. Okay. Bluebird is bored. I'm tired of this nest, he says. We need a new home. Next. If you insist, says Brownbird. 
but I'm not moving unless the new nest is better than the one we have now. Oh yes, says Bluebird. It will be a great nest. I will find the best nest ever. Look at this lovely nest. It is soft and cozy, and we can each have our own bed. This is the best nest for us. But it isn't. Look at this beautiful nest. It is so bright and colorful. This is the very best nest. Next. But it isn't. Look at this shiny nest. See how it sparkles. This is the best nest yet. Next. Sorry, team is just taking a while to refresh. And oh, is it just taking a while? Okay, no problem. But it isn't. Look at this large nest. It even has its own door. This is the best nest of all. But it isn't. Look at this nest. See how well it has been built. This is the best nest ever. Yes, it is, says Brown Bird. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Wonderful. Lots of hearts and caps I see coming up on Teams. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. OK, we are into Team 3. Raisa, you want to kick off with the intros? Hello, uh, I'm Raisa. I was the designer for Team 3, and our story is called Brave Bora. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Ellen and I'm the illustrator for Brave Bora. Hello again, I'm David and I was the editor on Brave Bora. Hi everyone, my name is Edna and I wrote Brave Bora and now I'm going to read it to you. Brave Bora. Bora is sitting at the clinic with Baba. Jojo, his stuffed monkey, came too. Jojo is sleeping in Bora's bag. I don't like needles. They hurt, says Bora. An injection helps make you healthy. It's okay to be scared, Bora. Baba will be right here with you. And Jojo too. Bora Baraka, a loud voice calls. Let's go, Bora, says Baba. It's your turn. Let's come back tomorrow, Baba, says Bora. Remember what Baba said you will get for being brave enough to get your injection? Asks Baba. A red lollipop. Okay, I'm coming says Bora. The doctor smiles at Bora. Is this your monkey? Can we examine him too? She asks. Bora looks at Baba, then at Jojo and nods. Now it's your turn, she says. Will you help me give a small injection to him so that he feels better? Asks the doctor. Toop, says the doctor as she gives Jojo the monkey an injection. Now it's your turn. Is that a superhero on your t-shirt? She asks. Toop, 
she says as she gives Bora the injection. Ouch! shouts Bora. Hey, that wasn't so bad. I know it stings a little, but we are done and you have been very brave, says the doctor. One red lollipop for our brave Bora. The end. Yay. Well done, Bora. Thank you. And the cutest monkey around. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wonderful stuff. OK, we are on to team four. Natalia, you want to kick off the introductions here? Awesome. Hi, guys. I'm Natalia, and I was the designer for Team 4, and our story is called To the Top. Hi, guys. I'm Julie smith button and I was the illustrator. Hi, everyone. I'm Carla. I was the editor. Hi, everyone. I'm Clea, and I was the writer, and I'm going to read it to you now. To the Top. Kiwe and her dad want to climb a big, tall mountain. There are many creatures that want to follow them on their journey. Next. A long-tailed bird watches them from his beautiful protea bush. Piwe is excited. Hurry up, Dad. Piwe shows Dad some tiny ants on the rocks, climbing just like they are. Next. Dad points out a rock that looks like a wildcat. Pure pretend she is a fierce mountain cat. Sure. All this walking has made Pure and her dad thirsty. Time for a water break. Pure and her dad sit by a shady rock to eat their snacks. Pure bites into a sami and dad peels a tasty nachi. Now they will have enough energy to keep going. Oh no, the wind has taken Peewee's hat for a spin. It lands on a Dussie's head. Silly Dussie. Dad pops out the bushes holding Peewee's hat. He found it. Well done, Dad. The path is steep. Dad sees Peewee is walking slower and slower and slower. Wee! Riding high on Dad's shoulders is the best. Piwe points to the top. We can do it. Piwe climbs the last big step. Phew! Wow, that's the biggest, most beautiful view Piwe has ever seen. She's so glad she and Dad climbed to the top together. Hooray! And look at that little Dusty. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That is beautiful. Okay, we've got one more before a short break. This is Mama, what for lunch? What's for lunch? Team five? Mbali, do you want us to kick off the intros here? Enjoy. Just gave up on us. There we go. Sorry, everyone. I dropped off my Wi Fi there for a moment. No, all good. I think, Mbali, you just need to um, put your mic on for a little bit longer because we missed you. We just heard enjoy. So start. You can introduce yourself again. Hi, I'm Bali. Um, I was a designer for Team 5. Mama, what's for lunch? Enjoy. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather. I was the illustrator for Mama, what's for lunch? Melissa, you want to say hi? We can see you, Melissa. Everyone can see Melissa there. She's the editor. 
I'm on my words for lunch. Thanks, Melissa. Gotcha. <laughs> Over to you, Sally. Okay, hi, I'm Sally and I'm the writer for Mama What's for Lunch. Let's go. Harry Tabo, Mama is making lunch, calls to me. There, Tabo looks very like surprised. Where are you going, Tabo? His friends don't understand why he chooses lunch over their game. But Tabo has a secret. Mama's lunches are special. On Monday, Mama shapes their food like little bugs that wriggle and crawl, making Tumi shriek in fright. Yeah. But they are yummy fruit and vegetables and not very scary at all. On Tuesday, she makes a lion that roars so loudly the house shakes. Roar! But it's just delicious pasta and cheese. On Wednesday, Mama creates a chicken that wakes up the whole street. Cluck, cluck, paka! But it's just a plate of juicy fruit. On Thursday, she builds a noisy truck. Tabo and Tumi cover their ears. Vroom! But it's a sweet strawberry jam sandwich. On Friday, Mama makes a beautiful garden filled with flowers, birds, and ladybugs. Tweet, tweet! But it's healthy pup beans and a crunchy salad. Mama, what's for lunch? asks Timmy. Yes, Mama, says Tabo. What are you making today? Tabo and Timmy can't wait another second. Their tummies are grumbling. Finally, Mama is ready. What is it, Mama? asked Tabo, licking his lips. It's Tabo, Timmy and Mama. Mmm, our favourite, your famous stew and rice. Thank you, Mama. What will Mama make on Sunday? Ta-da! The yeah. challenge to you at home. <laughs> to make similarly beautiful fruit and vegetables. OK, team six, over to you. I think that's Henny and your creative team there set to introduce yourselves. Um, hi, I think Nicole is on as well, but I'm Henny and we were we, we were a team designing um, this book. I can't see the um, screen now. Can you see the book cover? Yes, we can. <laughs> oh, okay. I went blank there. Anyway, <laughs> a very important tree is the title. Liam, you there? Oh, yes. Hey, hey everybody. Uh, I'm Liam. I was the we lost you there for a second, Liam. Take it again. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hello. I was the illustrator on uh, The Very Important Tree. Hi, I'm Carla. I was the editor on the book. I'm Ilana. I was the writer on the book. Um, and what a joy to be working with this particular team. It's a wordless book, um, so I'm just going to tell you the story. Buzi loves the beautiful big tree that outside her house. The sun shines through the branches and there are always lots of crunchy leaves and lovely flower petals on the ground around it. Next, next one. Monkeys play in the branches of the tree and eat the berries from the branches. Butterflies and bees fly around the flowers. There's so much life in this tree. Boozy never knows what she's going to find. Next. Boozy loves to scoop up handfuls of fallen leaves and throw them over herself in a leaf shower. 
While she's playing, her older brother comes walking out of the house to go to his car parked under the tree. Next. Then he can't believe his eyes. His nice car that he takes such good care of is covered in leaves, dropped fruit and bird mess. He is so cross. Next. He takes out his cell phone and shouts into it. Who's he calling? Boozy soon finds out. Two workmen come carrying come into the yard carrying chainsaws, axes and other things. They have come to cut the tree down. Next. Boozy is horrified. She runs to the tree and hugs it. The three men stand around her, pleading with her to move away from the tree so they can chop it down. Next. But Boozy isn't budging. Um, Boozy, one of the workmen, takes out an apple and says he'll give it to her if she moves. Boozy doesn't want it. Next. Her brother comes out of the house with an apron tied around his waist, holding a plate of delicious cupcakes covered in icing and sprinkles. He offers it to Boozy, but she doesn't want it even that. Next. Her brother tries again. This time he brings out a bicycle. Boozy really wants the bike, but she stays with her tree. Next. Boozy points up at the tree, showing the workman the secret that's in it. Near the top of the tree is a big nest, and on the nest is a big bird feeding her two chicks. Next. Now everyone understands how important the tree is. Her brother has a bright idea. The workmen go away and they come back, this time carrying poles and roof sheeting. This is for the carport that they're going to put up for her brother. Next. Boozy and her friends, her new friends, sit on the ground underneath the tree, enjoying the picnic of cupcakes that her brother's baked. The car now has the carport and her brother is standing under it with a bucket, polishing his car. Everybody is happy. Mother bird is perched on the carport and everyone is very happy with how things have turned out. Boozy is very glad that her favorite tree is still with them. The end. <laughs> I love these young environmental activists. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you so much. Just delightful. Okay. Team Summertime Adventure. Hi, I'm Anita. I'm the designer on this lovely adventure. You're going to have to download the final PDF to see the final product because we're not 100% done, but at least you'll you'll enjoy the story. Cool. I'm Josie and I was the illustrator for this book. I'm Carla, I was the editor. Hi, I'm Ali and I'm the writer and I'm going to read it to you. It's summertime. JJ and Joanne's favorite time of the year. Next. They like pretending they have a beach in their backyard. They lie on the sand and imagine a beachy backyard with umbrellas and boards and glasses and everything that they can carry to the beach. Next. They find buckets and plastic shovels. Daddy's buildings and makes great sand castles. Next. Daddy helps Joanne and JJ fill a metal basin with water. Let's add little ducks and soap for some bubbles. The pool is ready, yippee! Next.
Joanne and JJ pretend to swim. Splash, splash. I can swim faster than you. Splash. Next. As the sun sets in, JJ imagines sleeping in a tent. Let's build a tent, Daddy. Joanne and JJ ask. Next. They run into the house while daddy tells them exactly what to collect. We need a bed sheet, a torch, mattress, and a table. Can you find them in your room? Next. Now let's make the tent. Bed sheet over the table, mattress under them in our room. Next. We have a tent, hooray! And daddy is very proud that he's made them a tent. Next. Now we are ready to have our first summer camp. Next. Come into our tent, daddy. Pick the bed sheet together behind you. Next. Daddy reads to Joanne and JJ under the torchlight as they yawn and sleep and the ducks join them. Good night. The end. Hey. With the little duck, our duck friend. <laughs> Thank you so much. We've been so pleased this book dash uh, and you'll see it in one more story still to come uh, at all the nice caring fathers and male older male role models in these stories and that's really encouraging to see nice to see that coming through in our books okay on to team imagine over to you hi everyone um, my name is monique and i was a designer on this one Hi everyone, I'm Audrey. Uh, I was the illustrator for Imagine. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah and I edited this delightful book. Hi everyone, I'm Shopa and I'm the writer who's about to read you our wordless book. <laughs> Imagine. Daddy's home and he's brought presents. Little brother got a toy alien. What's your present? Is it a puppy? Is it a doll? Is it a game? Is it a bike? Let's find out. Turn. Oh, it's coloring pencils. They're not fun. Little brother doesn't think so either. Turn. Sorry, team just catching but, up. Okay, there we go. But daddy doesn't agree. He gives you a pencil, hugs you close, and says, look what you can do. He draws a door, an anywhere door. All you have to do is open it. You go down the stairs and get into a boat that's waiting just for you. Where do you want to go? This is your world. All you have to do is draw. Next page, please. Should we draw a sea of stars? And how about we draw a smile on the moon too? But what's that over there? It's an alien. Did you draw that? Next page. I don't think so. Let's erase the alien and keep going. Where else can you go? What else can you do? Next page. How about walk across a tightrope over a pit of lava? Tiptoe, tiptoe, walk, walk, run, run. Next page. Oh, no, not again. Go away, alien. You jump. Next page and zoom across the sky. You're a superhero. But look, there's that alien again. Next page. Fly, fly, fly. And the alien flies with you. Next page. 
Soon, you're having fun flying with your new friend. Next page. Just like you're having fun flying with little brother, drawing new adventures and brand new worlds. So, what will you do next? Where will you go? All you have to do is imagine. Great. Super, thanks. That is a delightful alien. TK. <laughs> Fantastic, thanks. Oh, we got the back cover on this one. Nice. Uh, Stefania, you want Hello. to kick us off with the intros? Hello, Arthur. Sorry about the tech issue. Huh? <laughs> um, hello, everyone. I'm Stefania, and I was the designer on the book Shongololo. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Matthew, and I was the illustrator for Shongololo. And I'm Sam, who's the editor. And do we have Timmy Sang? Hi. Go I'm Timmy Sang and I'm the writer for Shongololo. I'm going to start reading. Shongololo. Every day on their way to school, Pula and Pule, accompanied by their uncle Sika, pass by the train station. They like to watch the people boarding the train as they walk to school. They call the train Shongololo because Pule thinks it looks like a millipede. Next. After school, they walk back home with a group of other children, chatting and kicking stones and having a good time. Next. One day, Pula points at the odd segment on the train with a golden door. She thinks it makes the train quite special. Pula thinks it looks as ordinary as a train can be. Next. Pula daydreams about the Shongololo being a real millipede, moving underneath dry leaves with twigs. Next. In the evening, they go to the tuck shop with Uncle Sika to buy bread. On their way back, Pula sees a millipede crawling past them having a golden segment just like the train. Shongololo! Pula is excited and wants to take it home. Next. Pula carries it in her hand. She also notices the golden segment exactly where the train has its golden segment. Pula looks closely at the Shongololo, so amazed by what they have just discovered. Next, Pule places the Shongololo in a jar with holes on the lid. He has also grown fond of it. During supper, they tell their parents and uncle about their discovery of the Shongololo. Next, they wake, up, they wake Uncle Sika up to take them to the train station very early while it is still a bit dark outside. The Shongololo will need to get to work soon. Next. As soon as they place it on the ground, the tiny Shongololo starts to wiggle and golden dust starts rising from it. And then it grows bigger and bigger. Next. And into a train, the Shongololo train. Next. Pula, Pule, and Uncle Sika are amazed at what they see. Next. At school, all the children gather around and listen to Pula and Pule narrate the story of the Shongololo with great excitement. It is the happiest day of their lives. The end. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks so much. I'll never look at a train the same way again. Okay. Right. 
Right. Now we're ready to go with the last team. Team 10. Hi. Team, Georgia. My name is Georgia and I was the designer of Look Up. Enjoy. Um, all right. I'm Lauren and I was the illustrator of Look Up. Hello again, it's Sarah and I was the editor of Look Up. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Jane and I'm the author of Look Up and I'm going to read it to you now. Look up. Wow, look up. What do you see? In the morning, small sparrows and big hardy dars. In the daytime, a flutter of butterflies over flowers. A sugar bird with its long tail and a sunbird with its bright red collar. A yellow billed kite soaring high in the sky. In the late afternoon, bees buzzing to their hive. As the sun sets, geese flying home. The twinkling lights of an aeroplane full of people. When it's nice and dark, an owl swooping over the field. Bats eating insects for their dinner. A shooting star. Even when we're dreaming, there's so much to see. The end. Hmm. I feel like I've just had a bedtime story. That was amazing. It is a truly extraordinary thing what everyone here has achieved in the last 12 hours. Uh, I know that some prep went into it beforehand. Stories were drafted and some character illustrations were, were created, but really the work was done today and it is just amazing. Thank you so much to everybody.